So, hello everyone. My name is Jorge de Velado, and I'm from Indiana Nociencia in Madrid. And I'm going to present you this work that was published recently, in which we present a theoretical HUV pump, HUV probe experiment in glycine in order to study the charge migration phenomena, which has been shown to be associated to specific fragmentation channels in amino acids. It is important to remark that the part corresponding to the pump pods and the cation propagation has been fully completed. Whereas the part corresponding to the probe pods and the decatering propagation has yet to be completed and has only been described qualitatively. Now, if we move to the results and in particular to the nuclear motion of the cation. What we observe here is the time evolution of the CM bond and the CC bond. For all the cationic trajectories without accounting for the action of the pods. Considering that the color bars, indicates the cationic state in which the trajectory starts the propagation, we can conclude that CN elongation and fragmentation is associated to initial high cationic states, and CC elongation and fragmentation is associated to initial low cationic states. If we consider now the action of pulses with different central frequencies, and considering that in this case, darker lines indicate higher probability, we can see how 12 EV ionization favors fragmentation through the CC bond. And as we increase the central frequency of the pulse, we are favoring fragmentation through the CM bond. Being this one is slightly higher for the case of the existing EV pulse than for the case of the 20 EV pulse. So why is that? That's because pulses with different central frequencies create a different cationic wave package, which are the result of different coherent superposition of cationic states. So, in the case of the 12 EV poles, we are mainly populating the two lowest cationic states, which explains why CC fragmentation is more probable. And as we increase the central frequency of our poles, we are populating higher cationic states, which are responsible for CN elongation. From these pictures and the previous pictures, we can conclude that we can favor different fragmentation dynamics just by varying the central frequency of the pulse. Finally, if we move to the case of the cation, what we have performed is a qualitative study of three selected cationic trajectories. One that shows CM fragmentation, another one that shows CC fragmentation, and finally one which doesn't show fragmentation at all, which is here below. If we consider the particular case, of the trajectory that shows CC fragmentation, we observe at the top the pump proof scheme and the nuclear configurations, and below the distribution of the charge for the different fragments after 45 femtoseconds of the cation propagation. Being the x axis, the delay between the pump proof. So we can observe that after a certain time delay, the result suggests that the charge is very well distributed between the two fragments, and that CC fragmentation is indeed observed after the cation propagation. So these results and the same results in the case of the CM fragmentation suggest that it might be possible to retrieve a signature of the dynamics initiated by the pump pulse. But we still need to complete the full decatonic picture to reach further conclusions. So that was all and thank you very much for your attention. And also I want to acknowledge my supervisors, the collaborator of the projects, the funding and the computational resources. Thank you very much.